Hello, this is Justin Seven with SportsbookReview.com. This week I'm going to talk to you a little bit about black box modeling. What is black box modeling? Black box modeling is a statistical technique that professional gamblers use to set lines and find edges in markets. A black box model is this mysterious box where you feed it lots of data and you know tons of information and it'll you know when you give it a game matchup it'll spit out a team and a spread and if you give it the actual game spread it'll give you an advantage. So for example if you put in a matchup between the Cowboys and the Redskins, Redskins minus three at Washington, it would spit out Washington minus five and it'll give you an edge on that hypothetical bet. There are five basic steps you have to follow in order to create a black box model and successfully make money from it. The first thing you need is a lot of game data for whatever sport you're attacking. So if you're going to attack college football, you'd want to get all the statistics you could from Division I games for, say, at least five years, which would give you, you know, thousands of games. And you don't just want scores and spreads. You want actual rushing attempts, passing attempts. If you did uh, college basketball, you'd want, you know, all the individual game statistics, not just scores and spreads, because you'll fail miserably. How do you go about getting this game data? Uh, there's two main ways people get it. One is you get it from someone else. You either exchange information, you share it with them, you buy it from them. The second, much harder way is scraping it yourself. Uh, you go through, cut and paste, copy it into text files. And then the third way is you can actually hire a programmer. The going cost for five years of data for a sport, whether it's NFL, college football, baskets, typically is two or three thousand dollars. No matter how you end up getting your data, you need to do an integrity test to make sure that your data is good. So I would pick out a couple games, two or three, look, make sure all the statistics are actually correct. The other thing you need to do is have a filter. So whenever you read the data, you make sure that all the data are in what you call acceptable ranges. So if I were looking at an NFL game, I'd expect rushes to be between 1 and 60 rushes. Uh, I'd expect a spread to be between 30 and minus 30. You put checks on it on the outside ranges and it flags a game if there's something outside that so you can look at it and fix it because almost any type of data set will have some kind of mistakes in it. Now once you have this data, this big data file, you need to come up with what's called an iterative test. So for example, on week five, you'll only consider the data from the first four weeks, but you'll ignore everything after that. On week six, you can then look at the first five weeks, but you ignore the data from week six on. And what you need to do is you come up with a formula that you think will predict the scoring accurately. And a simple formula in NFL that's reasonably close would be to say if the league average is 22 points a game, if a team scores 25 points, that's a plus 3. If a defense allows 20, that's a minus 2. And you add up the differentials to predict the scoring on a neutral field. Then you might put in a factor for home field advantage, and it'll give you a, a rough guesstimate of what the line should be. Now that line's not going to be nearly good enough to actually make money, but it's a starting point. Now when you're trying to come up with a way to predict scoring, you're looking for ways to estimate future scoring that are more accurate than just looking at pure points. And it turns out there's a lot of things you can do to increase the power and precision of this. One example, if you're using, I'll call a pure points model, where you're just looking at points scored, is to look at the number of turnovers each team has. And a trend you'll often see is that the teams that have been victims of turnovers tend to have lower scoring and allow more points. So one test you could do is to figure out, well, what is the value of a turnover? And then you look and say, well, are turnovers luck or are they predictive? And you can do correlation tests. You do this and you might find out that for every turnover, uh, it unfairly adjusts the score by about three points. So in my revised scoring model, I'll still use points for and points against, but then I will adjust the scoring up by three points for every average turnover differential they've had. So if a team averaged plus one turnovers, I'd penalize them three points. If they averaged minus one, I might add three points. Now there are other factors that involve a lot of luck also uh, that aren't necessarily reflective of the score. You know, if you wanted to go further into turnovers, you might look and say, how many scores were there on defense or special teams? Or how many plays of more than 50 yards were there compared to what you'd expect? How many sacks were there? How many third down conversions were there? 
And anytime you see a, a statistic that stands out far from regular, that's probably a thing you might be able to adjust to come up with a more accurate scoring model. If in the first couple games a team is hitting 65% of their three-point field goals and you'd normally expect them to hit maybe 35%, then this team is going to look a lot better looking at scores than you'd expect them to go forward if they had a more reasonable three-point field goal range. So you come up with all these different factors, you mix them in, you come up with the ratios, uh, you use something called a regression analysis to try to figure out how much to weight each of these factors, and you eventually come up with a formula that you think will predict the score of a game. Now once you have this, you again do iteration tests, and your goal is to minimize the average distance of the scores from the actual results. Now if I'm doing spread betting, you know, I'm going to compare how the model does versus the actual spreads of in the games across the board. So an example, in NFL, your average spread turns out to be about 12 points off. So that if a team, for example, is a, a seven point favorite, on average, the result of against the spread is 12 points away from that. And you want your model to minimize its average distance from that spread. Now a lot of people, when they're analyzing these types of things, they'll use what's called a mean squared test. Mean squared is horrendous when you're doing black box modeling. The problem when you, when you use a mean squared test is if you have one result that's very far off, say you have one example that is you know, 40 points away from the mean, that tends to carry a much greater weight than all the other games combined. So a better test would be to either do a mean test, where you're just looking at the absolute value without any squaring, or another way to do it, even a square root test, or a mean with an addition. So you, for example, if you have, if you take every 